Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pragmatical SLP. My name is Bridget, and today I am going to show you how I use a doc cam in therapy and how I will be using a doc cam in therapy this week. This is what the doc cam looks like. This one was provided by the school district I work for. It is an Ever F17-8M model. It's their portable dock cam and it has a handle on the back so if I needed to bring it somewhere else it's very easy to transport places. You can see there's the camera button, lamp, freeze or stop the video, recording, add captions or delete, and then playback. And then these are for the camera itself, so zoom in, zoom out. This is flexible, so I can, can move it back and forth, but then you can also bend the head around. And then this part lights up. You can see it has a lamp there. So when I go to press the lamp, there it is. So this has been great just to brighten everything up if I'm doing an activity with students where maybe it's beneficial to have some extra light. So that is the doc cam. You will share the screen if you're using Zoom and then you will select content from second camera under the advanced options. So now you see me and you see my doc cam. So this week in speech therapy, we will be making paper turkeys for Thanksgiving coming up next week. So what's nice about the dot cam, as opposed to just doing this and holding it up to the screen and showing the kids, is that I can easily do the activity with them and not have to go between holding it up, putting it down or even doing it up here or putting it down and they can't really see what I'm doing until I hold it up. So what's nice about the doc cam is they can see in real time what I am doing and they can do it along with me. What I will do when I do this activity is the students I'm doing this with are working on interacting with each other, maintaining that interaction, answering questions. So who, what, when, where, why. So I might ask them, what holiday is coming up? And I can say, you know, who celebrates Thanksgiving? And the kids can raise their hands. I can have them ask each other, um, you know, if they celebrate, what they eat, what they like to do for that holiday, etc. So I have some feathers here and a turkey cutout. These were all created with a silhouette cameo, which is actually this machine that you can see in the background here. It is a high tech die cutter. It can cut all kinds of intricate shapes, um, such as the cuts in the feathers. And it's really nice because it could do intricate work and it can cut shapes even this is a more basic shape, it doesn't in less than a minute, whereas if I were to cut it by hand, it would take a bit longer and might not look as neat. So what I'll do is, you know, I'll put the feathers on. They can do this in any order. You know, I'll suggest an order, but if they want to do a different order, that's a-okay too. So, what will be nice is we'll be talking about what we're doing about Thanksgiving. And then we'll also be creating our turkeys together. And they can see what I'm doing, which I think makes speech therapy a bit more interactive and a bit more fun for the kids because we're all doing the activity together. Whereas if I'm just showing them what I'm doing, it's not as fun. Um, so each student is going to receive a turkey cutout and a bunch of feathers, and then they'll do it along with me. But this way, with them seeing it in real time as I do it, it shows them how to do it, or it gives them a way to do it. Um, and then it also just makes it a more fun experience, 
you know, it's like if I were to play a game with the students, it's more fun when the teacher is playing the game and they're truly involved in it as opposed to being like, okay, Bobby, it's your turn. And, you know, they're just more facilitating gameplay as opposed to actually playing. So I think for activities like games, something like this, it's just fun when the clinician is involved and doing the activity alongside the students. So this doc cam is great because it truly allows me to do the activity with the students for them to see what I'm doing to follow along as opposed to, you know, if I didn't have this doc camera, I'm doing it here and then I'm holding it up each time, you know, showing them. It just isn't as effective and smooth. Whereas this, it's perfect and easy. So if I wanted to zoom in, for this, it's pretty clear to see, but maybe I'm doing a worksheet with students. Maybe I plan to do some writing. I would just select the zoom in button and this can zoom in pretty far. It could probably keep going, but you get the idea and then you zoom back out. And I have loved using this stock cam, not to sound like a bit of a nerd, but when I first got it going and it first showed up on the screen, I was ecstatic to say the least. And what's great about doc cams is they're not only good for things like this, they're good for worksheets, they're good for assessments, uh, especially myself being a speech therapist and now doing a lot of virtual assessments. This is ideal to do those assessments if they're, you know, on an easel board or you know, the worksheet base, it's just really nice to have something just to show those assessments. Um, it's just great for a lot of different things. So I think of an investment that, you know, up front, it might seem like quite a bit, but I think it would get a lot of use over time. So that's how I'm planning to use my doc cam at least this week and moving forward for assessments for worksheets for other similar activities to this. I hope that this video was helpful and that you now have some ideas and know how to use a doc cam. If you have any questions about how to use a doc cam, how to connect it, anything like that, feel free to throw it in the comments below or you can DM me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is Bridget P. Carp, K -A -R -P. I'll make sure to put it in the description as well. Thanks for stopping by and remember to subscribe.